Yes, uh, hi, w welcome to my talk. Thanks for, for coming. Um, maybe a short intro about me and uh, my, my colleague. Uh, so I'm Max Revier, I'm having a small security consultancy X41. Uh, I usually speak German, uh, I'm not a CISSP, uh, still I might know something about security, don't know. Um, yeah, my uh, colleague in this research, JP, Jean-Philippe Maçon, um, he couldn't be here today because he apparently is at the beach or something, uh, yeah, so <laughs> good choice for him, um, still. Um, just before we start, uh, some props. So why d actually do, did we do this research? Uh, was actually when we met at Black Hat last year. The talks were not that interesting. And uh, so we started looking into the signal source code. Um, also to open whisper systems for like fixing some of the bugs uh, and to some colleagues who exchanged ideas with us. Actually, now I can add more people like Yuanxin and uh, Skyline and uh, everyone. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, signal. Uh, we want to look a bit on Signal, most secure messenger ever, like um, on the internals, on uh, the attack surface, uh, bugs, and that's it. We found, and some things we found, which are, might be somewhat interesting. After that, of course, we uh, give some conclusions, but you can draw your own conclusions. So Signal, messaging app, probably all use it or know it. So who, who of you uses Signal? Okay, basically everyone. <laughs> so, um, yes, then you all know Signal, what it can do, messaging app, uh, open whisper systems, the Maximalik, Spike, and friends. Uh, so it was text secure before. Actually, it was two apps and they got merged. Uh, text secure is the messaging app and Signal, uh, red phone was the voice and calling app that was merged and now it's Signal. Uh, they have a lot of uh, implementations for Android, iOS, uh, also Chrome desktop app. Um, it's normally regarded as a very trusted tool, like uh, Snowden endorsed it and uh, other very popular people. Uh, it's popular uh, amongst activists and um, yet the thing you see here is actually uh, information returned in Unix milliseconds uh, from a data request from uh, I think the FBI or so. So they say they don't store much data. So yeah, somewhat secure. So um, security promises of Signal are, of course, like end-to-end -end encryption. You don't need to trust the backend or the transport of Signal. Uh, so um, uh, even against active ne network attackers uh, on compromised servers. Um, yes, and the code is perceived as somewhat of high quality. Uh, there was no major security issue so far. Um, and they have apparently reproducible builds on Android. So, um, actually, Signal is more than Signal. So, it's the protocol. Signal protocol is used in Facebook's Messenger. If you turn, turn on the, the incognito mode, it's uh, used by WhatsApp. Uh, it's apparently used also by Google Allo's incognito mode. Um, so, they license that to a lot of other uh, messengers. Um, and so, the actual user base is quite large beyond the Signal app. Yeah, so encryption. Um, I will just go on briefly because we could talk for hours probably about all the crypto stuff that's going on there, so we'll just skip the, the details. But um, like the base of Signal uh, X3DH, Diffie-Hellman key agreement, um, is quite complicated key agreement. Uh, you have several keys, uh, actually four key APIs if long term, and the ephemeral keys and um, Alice and Bob, they sort of do Diffie Hellman and the key derivation and they mix all these uh, keys into it um, to derive a shared secret. Um, yeah. Um, interesting here is um, that Signal actually uses sort of a trick uh, for so good, um, one time free keys. Um, the problem in uh, messengers are. Um, that uh, if the uh, one party is offline, you cannot really do a Diffie-Hellman because if the party is offline, you cannot do a classical Diffie-Hellman <coughs> because you have to wait for the round trip and everything. So it's uh, not very convenient. So what they did is they uh, store one part of the Diffie-Hellman already on the server as a free key. So Bob will already have uh, completed his, his part of Diffie-Hellman. Why this is interesting is very convenient. 
very efficient, but uh, you will see later why this is actually interesting. So, um, uh, session keys in Signal are double ratchet, uh, used to call double ratchet. It's basically, um, it, the messages have unique keys, and this double ratchet is actually like uh, advancing, so um, this gives sort of like forward secrecy. You cannot, um, so every first message from a party gets a new Diffie Hellman. Um, so this is uh, so that even if the device is compromised, um, then uh, past messages are sort of safe when the keys are deleted from the device, of course. Uh, attachments work similar. They have uh, each attachment has a different crypto key, uh, so it's yeah, quite, quite good, actually. Um, Yes, so Moxie Imago Spike uh, actually uh, wrote a blog post and he said, okay, signal is actually the signal. Signal protocol um, is actually like uh, their uh, intellectual property, so um, um, you cannot call your app signal. So signal is like really that. Um, but the signal like protocol is used in a lot of other applications. So, okay, these are like the basics, signal protocol, but actually, what that wasn't all, right? Because uh, what about all the other things, like um, how are the other attachments actually encrypted? Like what are the, is the crypto used for that? Um, how are audio and video streams encrypted? And uh, how does integrity checking work on these attachments and so on? Um, how does group messaging work? We were only talked about one-to-one -one scenarios. So these are sort of code to documentation. The developers just uh, did what they thought were right. Um, yeah, which is actually also quite interesting. <laughs> so, um, just a short recap. Uh, so, Signal is uh, not decentralized. It has a server, so you can see uh, if two devices are end-to-end -end to end-to-end -to, -end to encrypted communication, but they use the Signal servers. Um, for attachments, they also use uh, Signal, and uh, the attachments are actually stored on Amazon. They're uh, stored on Amazon S3. Um, and the messaging servers are, seem to be run by open whisper systems. As I said, end-to-end -end encryption, actually, it's supposed that the signal servers do not need to be trusted. Um, yeah, the, the code base for Signal is quite, we would say, large. <laughs> and it has a lot of different implementations for iOS, for Android. Um, there are libraries. Uh, that's a reference implementation for the service and for the protocol itself. Uh, you can see that that's a more like, like maybe like 200,000 lines of code um, for only Signal. Um, but uh, we mainly looked at the Android app, and there the software stack is even larger. If you look um, look at all the things that are used, um, the crypto that's used is the Curve 25 um, from the Java X crypto. So it's also quite standard. They did not do their own crypto, uh, which is actually good, I guess. <laughs> um, so, um, but you can see it, there's a lot of stuff, stuff in there. Um, so, as I said, uh, we, we did not find a major security bug before as, that we know of. Uh, there were some analysis. There were minor security issues fixed, um, and there were like some some key compromise and uh, replay attacks discussed by the academia, basically. So um, maybe the more interesting part, like uh, what's actually attack our scenario here for attacking signal? So there are like basically like two scenarios. One is the network attacker, classical like man in the middle, active or passive. Um, so uh, yeah, he can inject, he can modify messages and uh, try to sabotage stuff that's stored on the server, like the pre-keys, uh, so classic scenario. Um, what's actually, a, let's say, more interesting scenario from an attack's point of view is if you're the malicious peer. So you can actually have the crypto keys, so you can talk the encrypted protocol, and you can send media attachments, and you can, um, can basically, uh, yeah, do a lot more stuff than a passive or a man in the middle attacker. Um, and this is like often overlooked in design of crypto protocols or in crypto messengers, I would say. So, um, yeah, uh, as you can see, we have this great picture of uh, <laughs> the Signal code, and there's a lot of third-party code in Signal. 
So um, if you talk about a text surface, it doesn't matter where the code comes from. Uh, so you have a lot of code that's actually not really under control of uh, Signal and the Signal developers. Um, you can see that, that in Android you have like 500,000 lines of code. Uh, in iOS you have a bit sort of less, uh, but um, you have WebRTC. Um, you have to say, okay, um, 500,000 lines of code, but most of it is open SSL, <laughs> and most of it is not used. So to be fair, uh, that's why there's such a difference, but still, there's a lot of uh, stuff. You have uh, OS components that decode images, um, that do low-level stuff, um, yeah, and the standard crypto. So, um, maybe also in terms of the text surface, like, um, I, I want to set up no messenger has that, but still, if you talk about, like, okay, how can I be attacked, uh, or how, can, how can someone using a messenger be attacked, um, there are no mitigations really, like uh, no sandboxing between media parsers and uh, the, the the messaging part. And um, uh, on Android, there's no hardware key store used. Um, yes, and basically, you cannot even prevent that media files are parsed from unknown sources. So I can just add you on Signal, send you stuff, uh, and your Android device will basically parse that. Um, yes. So we have some dependencies. Um, a lot of stuff is currently constantly added, so they now have GIF, they have uh, disappearing messages, they have, uh, I think now, more media types they can, can use, so it's getting larger and larger, it's not only the messaging anymore. Um, still, there's one thing, <laughs> most important thing, of course, uh, if you don't check the fingerprints, you're insecure anyway. So, uh, it might be basic stuff, but still, um, I don't think a lot of people do that, actually, that are not uh, security experts. Um, there's a thing called break-in recovery for Signal. So, if one, if a special key, or if the session key got compromised on a device, the protocol should be sort of self-healing, because when a ratchet steps forward, this key should be like uh, replaced. Um, but if you look at it really, it's, yeah, uh, the assumption is that the attacker only steals one key and not the other key, the root key. That is actually uh, um, the KD KDF key. So, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of uh, questionable. So, um, come on. Coming to the actual things we found, um, yeah, we had a very uh, tedious process, like uh, like doing a lot of fuzzing and doing concolic execution and building models and crypt analysis, a lot of stuff. And JP did a lot, and of course also the blockchain um, to to record the vulns we found, and uh, that's actually not true. <laughs> we actually <laughs> we're not really. <laughs> Uh, knowing what we were doing, no, we were not really planning what we were doing. So, um, seriously, we did not have a rigorous process, and like uh, we also did not audit Signal. So we um, we did not use automated tools. We basically used uh, auditing techniques. Uh, we looked onto the code and did manual um, uh, manual search for bugs and for for things that were interesting. So, um, of course. When you look at that from experience, you, just, you follow the input, you follow the data, you uh, follow the edge cases, especially in protocols, you fo follow bug classes uh, that are in uh, programming languages, uh, very prevalent. Uh, and um, as we looked at the server, uh, at the client code, we did not look at the server code um, yet. <clears throat> So, um, and also, of course, we looked at the protocol, but not at the calling, which is now WebRTC, so probably not a lot peop other people will have uh, looked at that already. So, um, basic tools, Android phones, iPhones, uh, Chrome extension, um, very, uh, very good if you want to do, like, uh, test stuff with Signal. There's this command line client. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's written in Java. It uses the original Signal uh, implementation, the libraries. Um, yes, and we wrote our own stuff a bit in, uh, in Python. So um, maybe for the first thing we found, um, uh, we found a bypass of the Mac that protects attachments in Android. 
And um, this is actually an interesting thing because apparently people are not looking for integer overflows in Java code, which they should, because uh, even if you can't like directly cause memory corruptions like in, in C code or in other languages, um, um, the integer overflow we found here actually allows us to like bypass a check. So it supports the program lo logic. Um, we found a um, an integer overflow here, so the, there's the, the encrypted file, and attached to it is a MAC address. Uh, it's a MAC. <laughs> it's a MAC. <laughs> it's a MAC. And um, this MAC, the message authentication code, um, uh, they subtract the length of that from the length of the file, and it's 30 into an int. An int in Java is 32 bits, so uh, files can be more than 32 bits in length. Um, so they can be like four gigabytes, or if you go above two, two it already uh, happens. Um, so this where you actually wrap around. So later on, it will use this remaining data <coughs> to read all the data that's uh, that uh, of the attachment and calculate the MAC from that. So it will try see if that data has been modified. So what we did is we hope you can see it here. You can, um, we attach uh, it's exactly four gigabytes of, uh, of padding to the file. Um, and uh, this results in remaining data being like the original size. So here only the original first X bytes are actually checked and the rest is not checked, but processed later on. So um, yes, um, is that actually feasible? Um, yes, because um, the attachments are downloaded using HTTP, and HTTP has a thing called H uh, uh, compression, con HTTP compression, content compression. So if you attach four gigabytes of ACE to the message and you use GZIP compression, it will result in like two to four megabytes. Like four, two, uh, four gigabytes compressed down to two to four megabytes, so it's uh, totally feasible to send that to a mobile device. Um, and it would take like in the background like some minutes to uh, sort of uh, unpack that, but uh, it, it it works. So um, yeah, you can. Um, the result you can see here, basically, um, uh, we got an exception where we did that. We basically got an exception, a bad padding exception. So basically, we were uh, bypassing the integrity check, and next the bad padding was wrong. Uh, so we thought, okay, that's pretty nice. Maybe we can do a padding oracle attack, um, which turned out to be not really working because we didn't have any back channel, so that was unfortunate. Um, uh, still, we um, um, discovered that they were actually using AES a CBC for to encrypt the attachments. Um, the problem with AES CBC uh, encryption mode is that you can like uh, mess with the ciphertext and with the outcome. So it's a malleability uh, property. Uh, so basically, um, you can repeat encrypted blocks and they will decrypt fine. Sort of, you can even um, if you know the plain text, what uh, you can even try to uh, up to change um, or force every second block. Um, of the encrypted data to be something that you want, want to have. Um, it's a, a non plain text attack, but still, it's uh, quite interesting. So, um, yeah, <laughs> we have this uh, little demo because uh, there were people like claiming that uh, this is actually not really uh, feasible to attack. Uh, so, we had to do this little demo. I hope the sound works. Let's see. So first of all, we just like uh, repeat the content, which is interesting for audio messages actually. As you can see, the last part of the message has been repeated. So um, this is just plain stupid, uh, straightforward. You just say, okay, let's just repeat the message to see what happens. Uh, if you actually know, if it's a voice message, if you actually know what's uh, spoken, 
things get even more interesting because you can now try to chop up the file. The signal mag validation bypass is not an issue. It has no impact and is therefore not so bad. This is what was received. The signal mag validation bypass is not an issue. It has no impact and is therefore not so bad. The signal mag validation bypass has no impact and is therefore so bad, so bad, so bad, so bad. No impact and so bad. Bypass, no impact is bad. Bypass, no impact is bad. Bypass, no so the impact is apparently is, is bad. Is bad. Bypass, it's not super bad, bad, but a bit bad. Um, so maybe Yonchin can use that and do DJ tonight for the party. <laughs> yes. Um, so apparently, if you know something about what was transmitted, you can do all kind of interesting things. So think about this on the sort of binary data. It could also get interesting. Like, I don't know, inserting stage right into media files or so on from trusted contacts. Okay. Um, then we found some sort of quirk, which is yeah, it's. It's not it's not a vulnerability, but it's like say a very strange property of the crypto protocol. If you set your public key to zero, actually the shared secret will also be zero. Um, so what does that mean? Um, so you could set your public key to zero, and someone who wants to communicate with you will get a predictable shared secret. So the encryption is not really working anymore. Um, you could argue, okay, actually, I mean, you could also publish your messages if you want to want to attack yourself or if you want to attack your peer. Um, still, other libraries do it differently, and um, it's very easy to just discard the zero keys. So maybe uh, maybe you should do that. Um, also, it might might be some kind of deniability uh, um, issue, and this breaking recovery is also killed by it. So yeah. Um, but uh, uh, Open Whisper Systems not, doesn't want to fix it, so yeah. Um, then, if you um, think about using the signal uh, reference implementations, or if you like, for example, the tests and like, demo code that's uh, provided with that, be very careful because actually, um, uh, yeah, there are some bugs in it. So uh, there are some some callbacks and. Um, they, we found type confusion there. We found integer overflows, um, heap overflows. Um, interesting. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Something. What? Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, there's a lot of stuff. So if you're using the C um, examples, um, be careful. Um, another interesting bug we found in Signal is an underflow or in the RTP code uh, for calling um, of signals. Um, it's actually a bit of a waste because this bug <laughs> is actually not exploitable beyond the uh, crash because it's shadow it was shadowed by another bug or more or less by the same overflow like twice. Um, still, it was quite interesting. So you could can you see that? Yeah, it's it's here in the bottom. Um, the payload length is actually calculated from the packet length minus the RTP header. So what they forget to check is, of course, that the packet is actually large enough to actually have a header. So if the package is like one byte long, it will underflow, and the payload length will be like negative, uh, which of course is not good. Later on, it gets thrown into an HMAX, so we'd have a very large uh, uh, out of bounds read and. Uh, and so on, all kinds of weird stuff happens here. Um, but as I said, it's not really exportable, but um, you could at least use it to crash uh, remote signal uh, instances. Um, yes. Uh, speaking of uh, crashing, um, we, we quite find some, um, some things that are interesting. Uh, so uh, signal and run uses Libskia for media decoding. And uh, this is actually yeah, all bugs on Libskia will hurt you. Um, we have an example here. So, um, just an example of a crash. Didn't check if it's exploitable. But uh, the signal thing will actually receive a message. Boom. Uh, so this is Android 7 from last year. 
apparently it triggers some kind of uh, bug in the Android, uh, which is sort of a problem because as soon as the uh, Android boots up, it will start sy uh, signal again and it will crash again. So basically your Android device is uh, sort of uh, bricked <laughs> if you're not able to, I don't know, intercept the boot and uh, delete, uh, delete signal from that. So it's, yeah, <laughs> quite an interesting thing. Um, internally, I think it was more like hitting an assertion. So it's not a common bug or something. Hit. It's a bug in Android, more or less, uh, but it's triggered by signal. I think this is a quite interesting example. Um, another, uh, another bug uh, that's actually um, interesting is actually um, in the Chrome extension for Signal. Let me see if I can find that. So, set it up here. Oh. I don't want to make it here. Oh. Okay, that doesn't really work. Interesting. Yeah, this is the the demo demo effect. <laughs> so I guess I have to sort of show that later. Oh, except if it crashed already, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, two minutes. Okay, so um, I can try to show that later. It's basically um, basically a crash uh, in uh, the Signal Chrome extension uh, if it receives a bad SVG. So we um, it took us like ten minutes to create an SVG to create the render a crash to render with an out of memory condition in. Um, um, yeah, in the SVG uh, parsing. Um, the point to show is actually, if you have any exportable bug in the SVG parser of, uh, of um, Chrome, um, this will actually give you access to all the signal messages because it will crash the, crash the extension, or in the, we exploit the extension, we exploit the renderer and set render out all the, uh, all the messages. So basically, uh, um, sandbox and anything's not helping you in that case. So um, maybe for also more interesting uh, thing, um, we looked at the protocol. <coughs> we actually found a message replay. Um, for that, I will, it's kind of a bit complicated maybe. Um, maybe you remember I talked about this X3DH and the pre-keys, they used to speed up the, uh, the, the keys uh, change and the key derivation. Um, so normally these keys are like one time, because of course, if you do a Diffie-Hellman and the values are repeated, you will get the same shared secret and you will get, uh, you can replay um, messages that are like encrypted and uh, integrity checked with that. Um, so um, therefore the messages are one time free keys, except for one of these keys. And this is the last resort key or however you want to call it. Um, it seems to be a fallback mechanism against DOS. So in the code, there's this, um, or actually they call it medium term key. Um, so there's this, this is the idea of this key. So if this is encountered, um, I cannot really see it on the beamer, but um, so if <laughs> this is encountered, um, it will not delete the key from its key store. It allows it to be reused. So, um, yeah, as I said, um, so when I want to send a message to someone else, I will, and then never talk to him before, I will fetch his pre key from the server, uh, complete the Diffie Hellman, encrypt my message, and um, send my public Diffie Hellman values together with the encrypted message to Bob. He will also complete uh, the Diffie Hellman on his side and can decrypt my message. So, um, and then the key is removed except for the last resort key. So um, this means if you could replay 
Um, if, if you could replay that, uh, if you could repeat that, you could re yeah, replay it. Um, they try to prevent it, but um, let me let's first look how does such a message look like. So basically you have the encrypted message here on the right, which is uh, the encrypted ciphertext, and on the left are the um, values that um, Alice, uh, public values of Alice, that's the base key, the ephemeral key of her, Alice identity key, um, the signed pre key ID that is used, and the pre key ID, and the registration. So, some values. These are used to complete the key exchange on Bob's side and are sent by Alice. So, um, it's a message, a bundle of message, encrypted message, and key exchange message. So, interestingly, in Signal, in the current implementation, uh, the key exchange part is not really integrity checked. So, there's a message authentication code on the message, but it's not on this part. So basically, if you're a man in the middle, you can just modify this va these values and um, create arbitrary, like, uh, random uh, sessions uh, in Bob's key store, or session store, um, which is very useful to us. So you can create, like, fake sessions. Um, so for the replay, they try to prevent the replay by um, not doing key agreement for known, like, uh, public base keys from Alice, so they will not create the same session twice for the same key. Um, also, they will not uh, remember this session if the encrypted message part is actually uh, not decrypted correctly. So, um, interestingly, um, they only can remember a certain number of session states. So. After 40 sessions, they will forget the old ones. So if you're able to create fake sessions, you can push out a valid session. Uh, and this, this means actually you can like purge the session from the session store to have it replayed. Also, um, the valid ciphertext, maybe if I go back here, the, the, you need a valid ciphertext in this part of the message. But interestingly, this does not have to um, be related to this part because you can have multiple sessions in parallel and it will try all of these sessions if one of them can actually decrypt that message. So um, you can just take a message from another session, ongoing session, and have it, um, have it actually um, bundle it with something from a new session. So basically you can get around that check. Um, yes, so to recap, so no integrity checks, Bob doesn't check. Uh, um, if the encrypted message belongs in that part, and also there's a limit on the session states. So if you combine that, um, we could um, force um, force uh, sessions to be only created with the last resort key. We um, um, actually uh, yeah push out the session state that we want to have replayed by creating these fake sessions, um, and of course we have to record the first messages that should be replayed. So. Um, I can show a demo. Actually, like uh, when we first did this research, we had a, had a demo on a toy client, but I managed like this morning <laughs> to uh, to actually do that on. I think the beamer is out again. So what? Oh, okay. So. Um, because I don't trust the demo god, I recorded it actually, and also to show you on a, on a real phone. So what I did is I created a simple man in the middle uh, server for Signal. Of, for, of course, I had to break the TL, um, TLS uh, for that, but I mean a man in the middle scenario, of course you can assume that the Signal servers are like compromised. So, um, and I have um, used the command line client to send messages to this uh, Signal app on my phone. So, we, um, yeah, we have this, this middle stuff that will intercept stuff, and then I sent a message, never replay. This is a message that should never be replayed. I'm sorry for the shaky quality, but <laughs> yeah. So basically, the message is like going to the main middle, and there, never replay. So, what I will now, now what is also now necessary for some obscure reason is uh, that um, you have to reset the session. So um, basically, people have to reset the session. 
Um, because the detail can explain to you in more detail, but it's, uh, yeah. You have to reset the secure session, so maybe the network was stalled, you thought yeah, you have to reset the session. So you actually do that, and then you can send, uh, hello? Ah, okay. Then you can send actually another message. So we sent the next message. So what we're doing, what we're doing now, is we're sending uh, more than forty messages. Where we actually, um, when we're in an active man in the middle, we actually we uh, capture, we modify forty messages sent from Alice to Bob, and um, add a new um, um, fake session set to, to it. We need to do that to be able to push out the original session, so we can replay it. So that's what we're doing now. So we'll, I just send messages one, two, three. You can see there's, uh, it's actually uh, receiving that. The network is not really great. Yeah. So um, instead of now waiting for the 40 messages, I will just actually uh, skip that part. <laughs> so um, the next part, we actually should be able to, yeah, see how it actually works. So we receive some of those messages. Uh, until we now we should already have exhausted the session uh, store and pushed out the session we want to replay. We're doing that. Um, so now it sent like uh, 42 messages that were modified in transit without the signal client knowing or recognizing that, even if it's fully verified and uh, the identity. Um, so yeah, here we have that. So if we now send another message, actually, I will just send some message test. It should also, our man in the middle server will replay the message. You see, there the message was replayed, actually. The never replayed message that was not, that was sent in the first place what was re uh, replayed and uh, inserted into the conversation, basically. Yes, so that's, I think, probably the most uh, interesting thing uh, because it's a protocol attack. Um, maybe so just some uh, last thing, some quirk. Uh, <laughs> it's also not really a vulnerability, but it's an interesting thing, so maybe someone has an idea about that. Um, <laughs> when you receive an audio file over Signal on Android, it will actually open a web server on localhost, HTTP server, um, and like unencrypted uh, stream the uh, stream the audio file to the media player on Android. So it will connect to localhost, some random port with a random URI, and it will stream that unencrypted to, to that thing. Um, the URI is really random, so we couldn't guess it, but um, yeah, it doesn't really f uh, feel right. So if you have any kind of information about uh, or information leak or your random number generator is broken, you actually can, uh, yeah intercept or get to the audio attachments from other apps. Um, yeah, which is interesting, sort of. Um, so um, now you can also have other attachments. We didn't really look at that, but it's an interesting point of uh, future research. Um, yes, so um, <laughs> it's actually quite, quite interesting. So um, maybe to sort of come to an end. Um, so Signal has a huge code base. It's largely un underanalyzed, so uh, we did not do an audit. We just found some bugs, so it's not complete. We did that in our free time because we were interested in uh, looking at Signal, uh, and we would expect a lot more bugs if somebody would really do a very thorough audit of that, I guess, so, so like protocol stuff. And um, yeah, actually the general point we want to raise is actually that um, the secure messengers are not secure if they are based on all these components and they have no not mitigations, no isolation, no sandboxing, no nothing. Um, that, and so one bug is enough currently. Um, and that's actually, I think, one of the main points. So it's not about security of signal itself, but of all the other things also. Yeah, thank you.
Questions? Thank you very much. Any questions from the floor? No? It depends on the scenario you're uh, using it for. So it's a classic OPSEC thingy. Um, it depends. I mean, if you're, if you're afraid of an uh, attacker that has, is using zero days to get you, you're not safe. Um, probably for the average person, and I would say it's not more unsafe than other messengers. But. Okay. Um, one question I had, and you said that um, the message headers were not uh, validated. Mm -hmm. um, what would happen if I send a message, uh, uh, if I have a session with the re recipient, uh, and I send a message with the header of someone else, will it show up in his application as though the other one sent it? Um, no, because it's um, like, um, um, there's also registration ID and, and the session is like uh, fixed to these communication parties, as far as I know. Uh, so it should not have a message from someone else because the keys won't, won't match. So, um, For uh, audio files, was there any indication why it was streaming from a HTTP server on localhost rather than a local media player or any better, more logical method? I don't know, no. <laughs> That's why I put it up here. It's uh, like a very strange thing and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know, maybe there was some reason in Android, or in, I don't know. It does do that on iOS, so not sure. <laughs> uh, thanks for your talk, first of all. Uh, I had a question about the demo, mm -hmm. the one with the 40 message thingy. So you've been sending like 42 messages to do the exhaust exhaustion of the pre-key, right? Yes. My question is, can you do that transparently for the user, just messing with the header of the pre-keys and stuff without sending the whole uh, yes. Yes. Okay. That's a good point. Actually, I think the the, the demo was maybe not that clear in that regard. Um, uh, we you have to modify forty messages. So I had oh. two. Okay. Mess so you were simulating an actual yeah. conversation. Yes. So I, I mean, this was an actual conversation, and I had to have a proxy, or a you know, simple Python proxy that parses the protocol and modifies the messages. So it's actually message modification attack. Any other questions? Oh, no? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>